Hello my friends, HM here. I make videos about topics that are important for whether the future of humanity will be better or worse. Today's video is the second part of three videos that propose and explain 16 improvements that Elon Musk's SpaceX could do to make the Shahid drone weapon truly revolutionary for modern warfare. If you have not seen the first video of my video series, you should watch this video number 9 before you see this video. If so, there is a link to the first video number 9 below this video. With that said, let's get to it. Another thing SpaceX could do is to build a constellation of spy satellites. Again, SpaceX is uniquely positioned to build a spy satellite network providing high quality intelligence on a massive global scale for target acquisition, flight route planning and target evaluation for this Shahid drone. It's one thing to have a good weapon, but without good intelligence about where to deploy this weapon, where to hit the enemy, and also evaluating how successful your hits are on your enemy, it's far less useful. So that's why a satellite network where you can watch the Earth in detail, getting this information is super important for making this weapon more effective. So why is SpaceX better positioned than its competition to make such a constellation of spy satellites? Well, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket here is able to launch mass to orbit at 2,700 US dollar per kilo. That's what they charge currently. And all their competitors are charging between 7,000 and 15,000 US dollar per kilo for same kind of launches. So they are way ahead of their competition here to launch stuff into space. Also, what's even more impressive is that SpaceX is far ahead with their development of their next rocket, which, which is called Starship. They have been doing that for seven years now developing and now it's finally close to having its maiden flight next month if everything goes well and it could be fully operational for cargo launches by the end of this year. Why is that important? Because it will be the first fully reusable starship on the planet has never been done before. And potentially, Elon Musk is saying that the operational goal for that Starship is when it's fully optimized, that it can get to as low as 10 US dollar per kilo to orbit down from their current 2,700 US dollar per kilo. That would just be a revolution. But it is possible. The fuel to fuel the Starship is less than 1 million US dollars. And this 10 US dollar per kilo is derived from a launch cost of 1 million US dollar for fuel and also capital cost of Starship, then it will be 10 US dollar per kilo because it can launch 100 ton to low Earth orbit. Even if it's 10 times higher than that, and that's definitely doable, that would be 10 million US dollar per launch. Currently, the Falcon 9 cost about 50 million US dollar, and that has this price there of 2,700 US dollar per kilo. So, 10 million dollar for a Starship launch when fuel is less than a million US dollar and it's fully and quickly reusable, that's definitely doable. Also, SpaceX has demonstrated the ability to mass produce satellites. It's not only launching the satellites is also producing the satellites. SpaceX has made over 3,000 Starlink satellites right now and launched them and they have gotten the price down to about 250,000 US dollar to half a million US dollar per satellite. That's the cost of it. That's very low when we compare with the price of other satellites are up there. I googled it uh, quickly and I saw that a typical spy satellite will cost you 100 million US dollar. A weather satellite is almost 300 million dollars and uh, yeah, a non-SpaceX communication satellite is like also a $300 million thing. Now these satellites are normally quite a lot more heavy. They're like three or four tons, whereas these satellites SpaceX has built are like three or 400 kilo. So they are smaller, but still there's a long way from their half a million US dollars to 300 million US dollar. And it's all about Musk's first principle thinking. Really, if you can mass produce things in large enough numbers, then all that matters is the cost of the raw materials, you will approach that cost. Raw materials don't cost more than a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars per ton. And that's why it's possible for SpaceX to do satellites like this sub 1 million US dollar per satellite. And it's only SpaceX who has done it. There are really nobody else who have done mass production at that scale. And we know that because found out some data that on January 2022, Earth had less than 5,000 active satellites in orbit. 
more than half of those were SpaceX Starlink satellites. So really nobody have achieved mass production of satellites like SpaceX has. It really is the company in the world that can make a bigger and cheaper constellation of satellites that could spy on the Earth and they should do it in order also to enhance the capabilities of their Shahid weapon. Now, I have also investigated what kind of spy satellites that it would make most sense for SpaceX to focus on building. And I have concluded that it has to be a synthetic aperture radar spy satellites for several reasons. There are two kind of spy satellites that are the main spy satellites. And one is optical spy satellites that uses ordinary cameras and zoom lenses just like any camera you would have here on Earth and uses the wavelengths of our own eyes, the visible light. And that's one way to make images of the Earth. There's another way that is to use these synthetic aperture radar spy satellites and they use radar instead of optical light. And that has some advantages. And one of the advantages is that radar can see in all kinds of weather. They penetrate clouds so they can generate images, high resolution images of Earth, even in bad weather with cloudy weather, which is not possible with optical satellites. They'll just see a lot of clouds and, and nothing else. They can't penetrate it. Moreover, they can also see through vegetation. And normally for military use, you will use a forest or some trees to hide your weapons, to hide your people. So tanks and armored fighting vehicles and stuff and trucks will be hidden under some trees. But these radar satellites see right through that and only make an image of the ground and whatever vehicles and stuff that is on the ground. So they're much more useful for military purposes. And they can also see at night. It doesn't matter that there's no light on the Earth because radar satellites send out their own light from the satellite. It beams down a radar signal and then it listens for the return of that light to reach back on the satellite. Whereas optical satellites, they use the light generated by the sun. But when the sun, when it's dark and it's night, then there's no return light from the sun. And then they can't really see anything but a black earth. They could, of course, see city lights and stuff, but, but that's not that interesting. For obvious military reasons, synthetic aperture radar spy satellites are far more interesting than optical satellites. You can still get better, higher resolution with optical satellites than you can today with synthetic aperture radar. But it might be a matter of time before you can actually get the res resolution of these radar satellites up to a level that is comparable with optical satellites. And there is another reason why SpaceX should first, they might do optical spy satellites at a later point in time, but not at first, I think, because the next uh, rocket from SpaceX is their Starship, and that Starship is designed with a satellite dispenser system. We can see Starship down here, and there is a satellite dispenser system that throws out the satellites through a small opening here, and then they are stacked inside, and they are just moved down and then pushed out. That means they have to be like a flat envelope shape and you cannot build an optical satellite in that envelope shape. It, ha it needs to have some optics that it needs to be in a box shaped satellite. So that Starship cannot dispense these optical satellites. They have to be flat. But a synthetic aperture radar satellite, you can build that flat. All you need to have is the solar panels that provide the energy. They fold out and they are flat. And you also need to have this radar antenna that is also something that can be folded out and that is flat. That's the one that sends out the radar signal, also the one that receives the radar signal. And then there's something else I discovered. I don't know if I'm right in that or wrong, but I actually believe that there's a possibility that the same kind of antenna that you use for synthetic aperture radar would be the same kind of antenna you use for communication at Starlink. Because look at the wavelength. The wavelengths of Starlink's Generation 2 phone communication ability has a wavelength of 1.5 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. And that's a wavelength from 20 centimeter to 6 centimeter. But the wavelengths for radar satellite is reported to be from 10 centimeter to 1 centimeter. So it's kind of overlapping. And that make me conclude that you can actually use the same antenna for communicating with wireless radio in phones that Starlink can do. And it's the same thing you would use for generating these radar images 
there's an observation I found very interesting because that means um, SpaceX already has the expertise to build this synthetic aperture radar spy satellites. It's not something completely unknown to them. And who knows, maybe they can already do it. They just kept it secret to prevent the Russians and Chinese from knowing what they can do and what they're doing with these satellites. Be funny if it's true. And something else of super interesting is that there's something you need to know about these synthetic aperture radar spy satellite. Why are they called synthetic? It's because the aperture is actually much bigger than the length of this antenna that can pick up the signal. The problem is the wavelength is quite big. It's 10 to 1 centimeter compared, and that's a hundred thousand times less than that of visible light. And because to make a high resolution image, you would have to have an enormous antenna that would have to be thousands of kilometers long. And obviously here you can see it's not a thousand kilometers long. It's just like, I don't know, 10 meters or so. So how do you get it to become thousands of kilometers long in order to get high resolution images out of this satellite? Well, you do it synthetically and you utilize the trick that the satellite is in orbit. So you can basically send out the signal and receive the signal along all the orbit of this satellite while you're looking at the same thing and that's how they do it that's pretty brilliant and it by the way it is called interferometry so i'll just read up this so these uh, radar satellites they use interferometry to combine radar signals gathered from several locations in space as they move around earth to magnify the resolution of the radar signal reflected from Earth. That's how it's done. And it's the same technique that was used by humans here to make images of black holes out in the universe for the first time. That's very recently been done. They used radio telescopes and the rotation of Earth to uh, make a synthetic aperture so they could get a much bigger radio telescope, actually the size of the Earth, synthetically by using individual radio telescope on Earth that were much smaller and had much uh, smaller aperture. So it's the same trick. It's pretty hard to make these synthetic aperture radar spy satellite function and they require a lot of data processing in a data center back on Earth before the images are made in a form that can be comprehended by human brains and looks like an optical image where you can see tanks and armored fighting vehicles and airplanes and, and ships. They need a lot of data processing and that's one of the reasons SpaceX should pick this up because Elon Musk is also the CEO of Tesla so he knows a lot about data processing. They have one of the biggest data centers at Tesla that are processing all the data from their self-driving cars and they use AI and stuff on it so it's right in his ball game to be knowledgeable about this. Data centers and stuff will be needed to support all the data processing from a huge constellation of thousands of these synthetic aperture radar satellites that SpaceX could launch. Now, I also think that SpaceX should develop the antidote for this 200 kilo Shahid drone. We need better weapons to counter this threat. And it is going to be a threat because it's obvious now that each year and with each new war, drones become ever more important in numbers and abilities. This trend will of course accelerate when the first large factories that are designed like automobile factories are beginning to spit out these Shahid-like drones in very large numbers. And we know already that Russia is in full swing preparing mass production of Shahid for use against the Ukraine. And it's a huge problem that no one currently have developed a great drone killer for slow moving, inexpensive drones. We need to do that. And the best current anti-drone weapons are probably these anti-aircraft guns with bullets and explosive rounds. And they can be overwhelmed, just send enough Shahids against them from all attack angles. And they can only react for 3 kilometers and only 60 seconds. So you can overwhelm them and then you can destroy an anti-aircraft gun that costs 10 million US dollars with 10 of these Shahid drones that cost $60,000 if you've used 10 of them. So what really would be the solution, uh, the antidote for this drone is to make a much smaller and faster Shahid drone to kill other drones, but also killing infantry and for intelligence gathering. And SpaceX should make that drone as well. Here in this presentation, we just call it SpaceX Shahid Mini. There's a triple role here for killing other drones and hunting infantry and also intelligence reporting. 
that's because then it's much more versatile and it will be ordered in much larger numbers by armies around the world and that makes the cost go down more you produce of them the less they will cost to make so let's take a look at what could realistically be the properties of such a mini shahid drone from spacex it should weigh about uh, 14 kilo instead of those 200 kilo for the ordinary shahid with 14 kilo it can be handled by humans and it should also keep its delta wing design with a propeller at the back and then four control flaps now there is an rc drone here also with this propeller at back and it only has two control flaps but i think four flaps is better because if it's shot at with an anti-aircraft gun and one bullet hit one of these control flaps then it will crash but if it has two it should be constructed so that it can still maneuver with one of its control flaps being destroyed by a bullet or some sharpener also how should it launch well it should launch from a catapult or could be handheld with a pull cable but i ha actually have a pretty good video about it how it could be launched and this is for this one down here so let's click that so here we have a shahid style drone delta wing it has a propeller here on the back it's also electric and it's launched here from this catapult that's brilliant and it's just mechanical this catapult it doesn't Maybe there was an electric motor that winds up a cable there. I don't know. Let's watch it again. See if we can see how it's done. But it could also be just a wire that is mechanically strengthened that pulls it off. Anyway, it, it looks like it's very affordable. You could probably make a catapult like that for a thousand dollars. It would be preferable if it doesn't use electricity, if it's just dirt simple and you just pull it up by turning a wheel around and then that's how you strengthen some kind of spring or something that has the force to launch the drone. But that's how it could be done. You could build thousands of them, them and have drones ready for takeoff sitting on these catapults. Okay landing it should not have a landing gear one way you could land them and retrieve them is simply by crash landing in a large elastic net so you have a big net where the drone could fly down towards that net and then basically make a maneuver where it goes up straight up turns off the motor and then simply drops back and falls into this net which will give it a soft landing instead of just landing on the ground risking that something will break during the landing that's how i would uh, do it just keep it simple and then a warhead it should have a one kilo warhead with directional schnabel that would be good for killing infantry but it would also be good for killing other drones that it sprays out a cloud of, of bullets in front of it and with one kilo that's a lot of bullets you could put your way a hundred bullets in a little cloud in front of you that could kill uh, infantry or other drones but it wouldn't hurt a tank or an armored fighting vehicle for that you should use the 200 kilo shahid and also, I should mention here, it should have a 10 meter radar proximity fuse. That's needed if you want to kill other drones. So when it's in a proximity of 10 meters from another flying object, that warhead detonates. The same thing when you are approaching the earth and, and try to kill some infantry in a trench. When it's 10 meter over that trench, that warhead detonates and spray a cloud of bullets over trench with the infantry inside it. There should also be this spy module in addition to the warhead. That could be a two kilo thing with optical and thermal camera and also active radar homing. It needs this active radar homing in order to be able to home in on flying objects in the sky or it will not be able to kill other drones. And that will take some weight. I'll come to it in a bit how that radar could be designed so it's not a big radar. Speed, it should be faster of course than the 200 kilo Shahid. So 350 kilometers per hour, that's probably what it should be designed to do. And actually this movie up here shows this RC drone, which is Delta Wing and it's also electric. It has a speed of 210 miles per hour and 337 kilometers per hour also. So let's take a look at it. It's launch also the launch system is a pull cable basically that, that launches it. That's another way to launch it. And look, it doesn't say anything. It's almost soundless. Okay, here you could hear it a little more. But I think that's a pretty good video of how it could be done. So range and duration, something like 40 kilometers flight range and flight time it would be 45 minutes. And I think that would be good enough for drone and infantry hunting. 
Then flight height should be the same as a, a heavy Shahid from 10 to 4,000 meters. And propulsion, that should be an electric propeller with rechargeable battery and fast charge to 80% in 10 minutes. In war situations, speed is sometimes important. So if you have recovered a drone, it's important that you can recharge it fast so you can send it out again. Could be a situation where you actually need it to be sent out immediately or as fast as possible. And then fast charge would be an important feature for this drone to have. And why should it be electric and not gasoline? Well, electric is certainly more quiet. These Shahid drones, the 200 kilo, they are quite noisy and they can be heard from far away and warn infantry to get into a bunk or an armored infantry fighting vehicle when they can hear that something is coming. To hunt infantry it would actually be better with an electric powered drone that is soundless. It should be able to surprise people and, and it will be able to surprise if it's soundless. And it's also less complicated to maintain in the battlefield if there's no gasoline involved. With a gasoline engine, there could be cold weather issues and stuff like that that's not present when you have electric drones. Then there are some control modes that should be possible. There should be a DJI control mode. We all know DJI, that's the biggest drone manufacturing company in the world. And there should be a remote controller like a DJI controller where an operator could send out the drone and have a video linked to this thermal and optimal camera on the drone with up to 10 kilometers radius. These 10 kilometers radius from operators, that's the same as any normal DJI drone. It could probably be larger. Maybe it could be doubled if you had a more powerful transmitter and receiver from the controller. I think it could easily be doubled. So that's a possibility. But I just say 10 kilometers to because I know that's possible with DJI drones. And then there should also be another control mode that's a Starlink control mode for drone killings. And how does that function? Well, there could be an independent radar station that detects incoming enemy drones. And then a control center that gets those radar signals will calculate the trajectory of these enemy drones and call up Shahid mini drone operators in that trajectory to launch the Shahid mini drones that are sent GPS coordinate via this 5G link to Starlink to get within one kilometers of the enemy drone, after which the drone is armed and use an active radar homing to get within 10 meters of the enemy drone before it explodes. And that's a pretty smart system. It can be operated fully automatically. This control center could automatically launch these drones that sits in their catapults. So it doesn't even need to call an operator. It can all be fully automated. And then it basically flies within one kilometer of this enemy drone. And then this active homing radar system takes over. The closer you can get it to the enemy drone, the smaller the radar in this Shahid drone will have to be and the cheaper it is to manufacture. So that's why I think it should just use GPS signals to get within that distance before the warhead is activated and it, it does its own homing on the enemy drone. But say uh, the Russians are nuking all the satellites in space and there's no Starlink that can be used to send GPS coordinates to get the drone within the one kilometer range of the drone. In that case, there should be a DJI control mode for drone killing. So same method as before, there's this radar station that picks up where the enemy drone is. And then a human operator should be called up and say, now you launch your mini Shahid drone and you should fly it in that direction you could be given those gps coordinate and you fly to that coordinate and then he just waits for new coordinates if more coordinates are needed to get say enemy shahid drone is changing course or something then a new coordinate must be reported to the operator and then he just steer the drone to that new coordinate and then when it's within one kilometer well the drone will take over and and do its own homing and uh, shoot it down so it can be used without support from this starlink system because it could be nuked and and be completely down so that's how i think this should be done then I have a lot of sources as usual. Uh, improvement number 13, SpaceX should also do the satellite image data processing and also image analysis for the image data gathered by the constellation here of spy satellites. So basically we have this process where we have some satellite image, oh and this figure here you can see, we have some satellite image data acquisition 
And that's all the spy satellites that are collecting that. They send it down to a data center on Earth, and that then does a lot of data processing, actually make the pictures and clean them up. And then we use some satellite image analysis that could be done by AI for most part of it. And then finally, it's ready for satellite image usage or applications like in the target acquisition in a Shahid drone or target destruction evaluation afterwards. The target has been destroyed, and then you want to know how much it has been destroyed whether you should send another drone and that could be here humans still have a role to play and this synthetic aperture radar system that I suggest SpaceX should focus on at least initially it has this advantage of course of seeing at day and night and also through covers of camouflage or trees that tanks and so forth have been placed under but they require a lot of image processing and also a lot more image processing than optical images. That means these big data centers are needed and also world leading AI development. And both of these things is something that Elon Musk, the owner of SpaceX, has a lot of experience with because he's also working on Tesla. And they have a big data center and also at one of the world leading AI development teams there. So it fits right into what he knows something about and SpaceX could also do it for sure. And then I have this information that IK, their ambition is to have a constellation of these SAR satellites, radar satellites up with their small satellites so they can make an image of the entire planet every hour. That's done by small satellites and I think they imagine their constellation should be a few hundred of those. Imagine what you can do if you have ton heavy SAR satellites launched by SpaceX and they have thousands of them. It will not be every hour, it will be every few minutes that they could get a high resolution picture of the entire planet. And then we'll have data centers to chew through all that data and spit out where your enemy, you could say. Russia is an enemy, North Korea enemy, Iran enemy, they have all threatened us with nuclear weapons and obviously they are our enemies. They will kill us if they can. China will not kill us. They are far more civilized than these rook countries. I call them Russia and Iran. But we'd still like to keep an eye on China. I don't trust them. And with this system, we could keep an eye on them. Everybody in the Western world could keep an eye on them just to see where they have their military. And you could do that on a minute by minute basis. And that's what we could do in peacetime with such a large constellation of SpaceX satellites. We could have peace of mind by knowing exactly what our enemies and adversaries are up to at any given time on our timeline. I have more sources for all the things I've said here and so you can follow up on it and learn even more about it. If you like this video I'll be grateful if you will give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. That will help me enormously to make better content for you and others in the future. Also recall that this video was the second part of three videos that explain all the 16 improvements that SpaceX could do to make the Shahid drone truly revolutionary. To see the final and third part of this series follow the link below this video. Thank you for watching my video. I wish you a healthy and fulfilling life in freedom and democracy.